What is up? And welcome to No Agenda, where I have my internet friends come teach me stuff. I am super excited about our guest today. I have a very special guest, Adam Boro. Adam, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. This is going to be fun. Uh, Adam's going to be teaching us how to make a bucket list and actually execute on it. And I couldn't think of a better person to do this. Uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, watching your content. I think I came across your stuff maybe a couple months ago and have been a, a follower since and a supporter and just intrigued by all the cool shit that you do. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about this because I think a lot of people talk about having a bucket list. Like you always hear like, oh, the, you know, whatever, whatever, jumping off a plane is on my bucket list, but not a lot of people do. And of those probably even less actually do the things that they said they were going to do. And I know you've, you've made good progress. So i um, really excited to go through this today. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. Yeah. Everything you said is completely true. Like so many people talk about like wanting to have one, but yeah, I don't know. It's kind of scary to like make that first step. Yeah, but I think it's very important. You're gonna hopefully inspire people and tell us how you did it, how you pulled it off yourself, um, and we'll we'll see what we can learn from this. So, uh, I was trying to think of what the right bio was here, but I feel like talking about where you went to college and your first job probably wouldn't do justice. So here's what I'm gonna do: I'm gonna list off a bunch of shit that Adam's done, and then you can fill in the blanks with anything that you feel like is important. So these are actual uh, things that Adam has done and are featured on his pages. So lived in Tahiti with 20 strangers, went on a first date to the North Pole with a stranger he met on TikTok, got dropped in the middle of Lebanon with no phone or money, met a Mexican cowboy in the desert, and took a helicopter ride above New York City with your Uber Eats driver, which uh, I think if I had to pick a favorite, that was one of the most enjoyable ones to watch. Yeah, those are all true. Yeah, <laughs> You're not making <laughs> this shit up, are you? I like forgot half of that. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> it's really amazing. I'm like, wow, holy shit! I heard that. That's crazy. Yeah, and I had, by the way, I there was there were twenty, and then I made it ten, and then I was like, what's the right? Maybe five, you know, and that's where I ended up on this list. But <laughs> I think my favorite of the list was the helicopter ride, just because of the way you captured it, and uh, I think it was also a bucket list item of yours that you checked off or something like that. And so, Justin, maybe we can pull this up, and Adam, can you talk us through like? How did you end up flying over New York City with a complete stranger on a helicopter? Yeah, it was crazy. Like such a, it was also one of my favorite videos to make. So I was talking to this helicopter company about doing a flight over New York City and like getting it sponsored and everything. And I, I was gonna originally make a video of just me going across, like going above New York City. Sure. And then I was like, what if I? got another person to come with me like that would be just like so cool so yeah, i was yeah. thinking like how can i make it a cool story like who, who should i include and then me and my friend were brainstorming like how could we make this fun and like i don't know unique and we're like what if we brought like we're thinking about ordering uber eats so we're like what if we brought our uber eats driver <laughs> to come with us actually on the helicopter how many uber eats orders did you have to do until you convince someone to come on so we were scared we we're gonna like blow so much money and <laughs> so we, we ordered our first first uber, uber eats which was like the actual uber eats we wanted uh he said no because he had some kind of like family thing to do and then the second uber eats driver said yes like immediately he's like kind of hesitant but then he's like yes so now let's do it and you just dropped everything. Was, wow. Yeah, it was, it was so cool. I mean, props to you guys for having the idea. It's genius. But also props to the Uber Eats driver for just leaving midday. I mean, who knows? He might have had three more orders to drop off. And he just completely abandoned them to go hang out with you guys on a helicopter. That is, that is spontaneity at, at its finest. Yeah, he was like so spontaneous and such good energy. He came with us and it was just, I don't know. I was I was really nervous about it too, honestly. Like I'm not a lot of these videos I like I'll do it and it might seem like normal or something. Like I come off as normal, but for me, I was so nervous about asking. I was rehearsing it so much. You were nervous about actually asking him to come with, or like that something would go wrong as you were on the helicopter? Like so many things. Like, first of all, it was raining. So there was such a high chance that it was gonna get canceled. And even the helicopter company was saying that. Um, and then I was, I don't know, I was nervous about asking for some reason. And then I was nervous about people saying no. And I don't know, I wanted him to have a good time. So I wanted everything to work out. 
And I kind of run everything. I was like doing the video, the the editing in real time, um, like planning everything. So yeah, but it worked out amazing. And it was, yeah, one of the best memories from last year. It was sick. You guys must have been tied because in the video, you can see you guys are like half hanging out. It was, I, I was getting anxious just watching you. Like my <laughs> hands started sweating, uh, watching you guys lean over. I was like, dude, Adam, we need you. We got, we got more bucket list items to check off here. Surprisingly, the helicopter itself was the part I was least nervous about. That's so funny. Like actually hanging off a helicopter. So my, my second favorite, and this is obviously I'm biased here because I think I shared with you that I'm, I'm ethnically Lebanese. I lived there for a little while. Uh, and you made a ton of videos about being in Lebanon and highlighting what hardly gets casted in the media. We, you know, when you hear about Lebanon, there's it's usually about the political situation, about the corruption, the explosion that happened recently. And it's rare that people show the amazing parts of the country, like the mountains and the uh, beaches and the amazing people and the amazing food. And I thought your videos did justice to all that stuff. So yeah, definitely biased opinion here, but that was a, a great video series, uh, in my opinion. Thank you, thank you. Th that's so true. Like whenever, before I went to Lebanon, I was so scared and there's so much meat. If you look up travel, Lebanon travel, the first thing that shows up on Google is do not travel. Yeah. Level four wording, like avoid at all costs. But my experience actually being there, like, yeah, there's a lot of corruption with politically, but, um, and you know, there's, there's some things wrong with like the economy and stuff, but actually being there, meeting people in real life, Everyone's so friendly, 10 times more friendly than the U.S. Most beautiful places. There's snow-covered mountains, beautiful beaches, like crazy forests. It's a special place. It's, it's yeah. So I try to tell people this, but obviously it's different coming from me. People consider the source. So it's especially cool when, when white people endorse Lebanon. It carries a different kind of weight. So yeah. I, again, I appreciate you uh, putting us in the media for the positive. That's great stuff. Dude, I'm Jewish also. Yeah. My whole family, everyone I know is like, dude, you're going to get killed for being a Jew there. And I told so many people and they didn't care. It was like everyone was very like open and friendly. Yeah. You know, accepting. I think the first video I came across was something about you meeting the coolest girl in Lebanon or something like that. Like this girl was awesome. Yeah. Her energy was like unmatched. Yeah. Okay. So that's awesome. Those are just a few of the things that Adam's done. We will get into more when we go over kind of like Adam's uh, lesson on how to make your own bucket lists and uh, check stuff off. Uh, and there's there's no shortage of fun stories. I think we can probably pull out of Adam. But so how did you get into this life? I have to know, like, did you because you, you went to college, studied engineering, right? There was something about NASA, you wanting to work there. How did you find yourself going all, all these adventures and like, is this your full-time thing right now? Or what, how do you describe your, I guess, profession <laughs> as it exists? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. So right now, like very thankfully, it's my full-time thing. Um, it's crazy. I still like can't fathom how it's possible, but yeah. Um, but how I got into it. So I guess the story kind of starts off when I was in high school. I felt like very much like I was, wasn't living up to my potential at all. Um, I wasn't close to my parents. I wasn't close to my brother. Like actually me and my brother hated each other. Um, I didn't have like a very good like support system of friends. And I don't know, I felt like I wasn't making any impact at all. So I don't know, I always had this like thing bottled up inside me that I wanted to like do more, but I didn't know how to. Um, but I was also like really passionate about space. So I went to, I ended up going to college for aerospace engineering. Oh, wow. And I thought my dream was to work at NASA and be an astronaut. So I literally just like pushed on that like so hard. So I got a lot of internships and like did research work for a lot of different space companies. And by the end of college, I realized like this isn't it. Like working corporate lifestyle is like way different than all the space movies that show like all these heroic, like NASA employees, you know, saving the world and stuff. What is the like traditional path to becoming an astronaut anyways? Like, is it you start as a, an assistant and doing research and like, how do you actually get to becoming an astronaut and them trusting you to go on, go in space? 
there's no concrete path. Like, I guess what a lot of people do is they'll go into the military and aviation and become the top of the top of the top of pilots. And then they'll dedicate their whole lives doing research on like some sort of aerospace field or like science or something. And yeah. And then after doing all of that, like having the best possible resume ever possible and working for NASA, you'll have, I don't know, 1% chance of maybe becoming an astronaut. I didn't realize there was a hierarchy there. I didn't realize it was like in the same sort of, it was regarded in the same uh, vertical as like pilots and, and yeah, like th- that, at least back in the day, that's exactly like, that's the only way you could become an astronaut, I think. So at some point you realized like that wasn't going to be your thing. And then were you, you were working for NASA at the time doing like content stuff for them, right? No. So I did an internship with NASA and I also did like student research for NASA. Like, so what, when I was, when I was a, like a, a kid at college, I was just doing like half of my time was actually doing schoolwork and then half of it was doing research. So I'd go to NASA Goddard in Maryland. Yeah. Like after school and just do research about satellites and stuff like that. And then I interned in NASA Kennedy Space Center doing engineering work. Wow. Yeah. It was really cool. I learned so much, but I don't know. It wasn't for me. So you didn't like the corporate life. Uh, aspect of it and you're like okay this astronaut thing is cool but maybe not all i thought it was when i was a kid and saying i want to be an astronaut what where did you how did you like pivot and yeah how did that intersect with like the content that you make and 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 where are you now like take us through the the rest of that the thing is like becoming an astronaut is like still something i want to do but the thing is i don't want to spend my whole life working towards something to maybe get the chance of getting an experience that'll last, I don't know, a few months. Like I want my life's work to be of purpose and where like every day I feel like I'm living like my best life and something that's like creating an impact. So after realizing like all this and I kind of came to that conclusion end of senior year of college, um, I think the pandemic hit. And oh, okay. so alongside all of this, I was making videos and I've always been passionate about like sharing stories through videos and expressing myself. Um, and once I graduated college, uh, that was exactly the year of the pandemic, it was 2020. And I don't know, I was like, it, it kind of felt like a, a good pause where I could reflect on my life and think like, if I could do anything, what would I do? And I don't know. I just said, fuck it. And just started going for it. So I started posting videos on YouTube of all the, like me traveling for the first time. And I slowly got into the traveling and the bucket list stuff. And then I started posting on TikTok and just like a mixture of hard work and a lot of luck and like crazy opportunities coming from TikTok just like manifested itself into, I don't know, the crazy shit that's happened ever since. Okay, so now you're not officially affiliated with any one institution. You kind of do your own thing. You talked about the helicopter thing, and I know you've done sponsorships with like other travel-related companies. So is that pretty much what your full-time gig is now, is like working with brands to simultaneously endorse their products, get paid, or get uh, funded to, to do your bucket list item things? Is that kind of the model as it exists today? Yeah. So basically, it's all just based off my social media. So I make videos on my social media and a lot of times I'll do brand deals. And then sometimes on the side, I'll make videos for other brands that just live on their pages. And like, I never post any of it. So you're a full-time content creator. Yeah, full-time. Yeah. You've managed to create this sort of like parallel track where you're simultaneously checking off your bucket list while getting paid to do it or at least getting funded to do it. Yeah, it's crazy. Like it, it it's it's so insane. Honestly, it's I, I don't understand how it's possible, but yeah, you got quite the fucking setup, dude. I gotta say, and I <laughs> you deserve all the credit for getting there because I I'm sure it came with no shortage of of hard work and hours. And I've seen you featured when you were 15 years old making videos and stuff like that. So you definitely deserve, but this this is one of the cooler setups 
that I've seen for a content creator. Cause it's not like you're just shilling brands and one day you do a commercial for Oreos and the next day you do a commercial for, uh, I don't know, like, uh, some clothing brand or something like that. Like these are all thematically related to the, the bucket list items that you have set out. And then, uh, the way that you're able to storytell makes them, I guess, enticed to work with you, which is just amazing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. Like, I guess to say at the start of it, it was not possible at all like that. Like I just worked a lot of different side jobs and like when I was starting, I, my brain was so chaotic. I was working for one company and then doing random side jobs and helping people and stuff. And the videos didn't provide at all. Yeah. And there's so many times I was questioning myself. I was like, there's no way this can work. Like I was doubting myself so much. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just, got super lucky with just like different opportunities that were able to like be thrown my way. Well, I could keep going here and uh, maybe, maybe we'll do after hours with Adam and you can teach me how I can make this into my life. Cause this sounds like a, a dream job situation, but um, I want to pick your brain on a couple more things. So cultural observations, you've traveled obviously around the world. I'm curious to get your take. You grew up in New Jersey. You're obviously American white Jewish guy. What are, uh, is there a culture you've come across in your travels that you've thought to yourself, like these guys got it right, or they are the happiest sort of like people in the world? Hundred percent on French Polynesia. Okay, that's in the Pacific or something, like an island. Yeah, it's like an island group, just straight up in the middle of nowhere. It just you 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 get the globe and you look at the Pacific Ocean. It's just like a dot, dots in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. French Hawaii, basically. Yeah, so it's it's, it's <laughs> similar, I guess, like the landscapes to Hawaii, but it's so different. What did you like about it? What was special about French Polynesia? Oh my god! So I mean, okay. So first of all, it's like paradise on earth. Like if you just were dropped there and you you looked around you, you'd be convinced you're in heaven. Yeah. And then the people, it's so insane. It, it took me weeks to just. Like gets used to the fact that these people are actually being this nice and aren't like putting on a show or like doing it for like a, like a hidden agenda. I don't know. It's the most selfless and kind hearted people like deeply in the hearts like I've ever met in my entire life. Why did you go there? <laughs> it's kind of a long story. Give us the spark notes. Yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll make it short. So basically I somehow got this opportunity after I graduated to become a body double slash stunt double for a French TV show uh, that's that was being filmed on that uh, in French Polynesia. Of course you did. <laughs> and it was so sketchy, the circumstance. Like I got, the way I got it was through Facebook Messenger. And I, I had to fund my own money to go there. And I didn't even know if it was going to be real, but it ended up being real. And I brought my best friend from college along with me and we became body doubles slash stunt doubles for a month. No way. And then after that, we were just like free to travel for another month with no plan. And this was a, this was a bucket list item of yours, right? Um, Being a stunt double? Sort of, sort of. Yeah. It, 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 it kind of like, once I heard the opportunity, I was like, yeah, like this is not my bucket list. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you added it after. There's an asterisk next to it, but it definitely... It definitely counts. <laughs> Did the thing get made? The movie, the show, whatever it was? Like, could we pull it up and show people? The thing is, I had to sign a NDA. So I don't know if, I don't, I, I'm not sure like. Oh, it hasn't been, it hasn't like, been sent out yet. It hasn't been produced yet or released. No, it's, it's, it's out there, but I don't know if I'm allowed to say like which show it was. Like, Oh, because your face isn't in it because you're a double. Are you naked? Is that why yeah. you're not telling us? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Not that exciting, but... All right. Well, maybe we can link it later. We we'll 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 find out uh, the legal requirements around that. Um, okay, so French Polynesia, I'll add that to uh, to my bucket list, maybe. One more question before we get into the bucket list stuff. Your, like, I don't want to overlook, like, the content that you've put out there is some of the best I've seen in terms of, like, storytelling, uh, the shots that you're able to get. Like, there's... I'm only now starting to come online to some of this stuff as I produce more content myself of like 
oh, where you shoot the video from actually makes a huge difference in how someone actually reacts to it and you know, how it evokes emotion. Like, what's your general creative process for creating these? And, and we can flash a couple more of these videos up for people to see, but they're like really well thought out vlogs for the most part, I would say, or, or maybe correct me if I'm off here, but that's kind of the style of videos that you usually capture when you're, uh, when you're traveling, right? Honestly, I don't really have a process for it. It's kind of, it's just, I, I've, I've been making videos for so long, so it's kind of just natural to me. Do you shoot all the content first? Well, or do you have a narrative of like what you want to tell? tell? It, it depends on each video. Like, so sometimes sure. I'll just live an experience without any intention of making a video of it. And I just naturally like love recording things for my memories, like my camera roll. I have like 50,000 videos in my camera roll. And I'll just record an experience. And then after the experience, I'll be like, oh shit, that was so profound. I learned so much. Like that was crazy, a crazy story. And I'll kind of just like mix it together, put together like a story in post. And then sometimes I'll do more like video essay style where like I want to communicate a certain message. So I'll put together a script and then like reverse engineer, like me walking through an airport, like recording myself and yeah, I don't know. Dude, some of them have like this poetic component of it. Like the the one you made about rainbows and rain and like the three rules and it all comes together nicely. And then you actually see a rainbow. I'm like, holy shit. Like this is so, uh, I guess, well produced on the video stuff. And there's all these cool videos features, but also like, you know, it comes together so nicely and brings together like authenticity in a way that I think many tra travel bloggers miss. Like usually you follow a travel blogger on Instagram. It's like them at the beach with their, like, their hot body and their partner. And, you know, they're like flexing how cool their life is. And I think you do a really intentional job and, and good job of like showing the bad parts about traveling, whether it's like loneliness or you know, you getting food poisoning or something like that. <laughs> like that, that stuff I think is what, what elevates the content in general. Yeah. It's, I don't know. I, I it always bothered me whenever I watch like travel content creators, like most of them is just showing off their life. And I don't know. It doesn't like, it never made me feel good whenever I saw that. I was like, fuck you. Like you're just living like the best life. But the thing is I wanted to also travel, but I wanted to do it in a way that it's providing value to some to people, you know, telling meaningful stories, sharing other people's stories. And yeah, I want all my videos at the end of the video for you to feel something, whether it's like inspired or, you know, like, oh, shit, like this is real life. Like this is what it's like out there. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I always try to like spin whatever I'm doing in a way that will actually provide value to someone that's watching it rather than just like feeling jealous yeah yeah it's awesome stuff and then sometimes you'll even include people from the comments in your videos like the same way that like mr beast will be like oh five of our subscribers are going to come with us on this excursion or something like that i know you've done some of that stuff like the first date thing and, and that kind of stuff yeah yeah i saw you had to talk to her parents for the first date that's pretty funny <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah so that was like another bucket list item um there was, I think I was last year. So wait, let's let's give people the context. It was the, the North Pole date with a stranger, right? So on my bucket list, I forget why I wrote it down, but it was on my bucket list to go on a first date with a person to see the Northern Lights. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, it, I, it just caught my eye last year. I was like, what if I actually made this happen? So I just put out a call out. I was like, this is on my bucket list. Next week, there's supposed to be crazy Northern Lights. Um, so if you're a girl and you want, you'd be down to actually go. Like, not just, oh, like, it sounds cool. Like, let's actually make this happen. Um, <laughs> comment below. And somehow, like, just everything worked out. And uh, me and this girl went to make it happen. It was, it was crazy. But she made you first do a, a phone screen with the parents, right? That you also documented? Yeah. <laughs> you crushed it by the way. Was, you absolutely crushed it. That, that was interesting. Yeah, I was like so intimidated. I was like, all right, like 
let's see how this goes because this my, my everything might just blow up my face and i might screw it because they might just hate me the parents but yeah they ended up liking me a lot and they were they were really cool i mean this is not taking her to the prom adam you you fucking <laughs> took her to alaska all right let's get into the bucket list uh because this, this is we I, I could talk to you all day about all these like travel stuff but i want i want to hear your rationale what what was there a day you woke up and you were like something happened and you were like i need to write down all the things um i want to do in my life i feel like people usually come to this sort of like uh realization later in life you're young 20 something right yeah i'm 24 what made you want to sit down and, and write a list of things that you wanted to do? Let's start there. Dude, it's just, yeah, I feel like it was, there wasn't like one specific, like, you know, changing turning point for me, but I'd say it was kind of like a culmination of just so many different things. I'd say I watched the show The Buried Life on MTV. That was very inspiring. It's about four guys going after their bucket list and helping others make their bucket list happen. That was very inspiring. Yes Theory YouTube channel, also very inspiring. Uh, a group of guys going after their bucket list, uh, going on crazy adventures with each other. Casey Neistat, Goat. also on YouTube. Oh, I saw a lot of these people on, on media and online just going after their goals and like living like the most fulfilling life. And I compare that to where I was, like just, I don't know, not very good friendships and relationships, not doing much in my life that's impactful yeah i don't know i just kind of got this realization that one day i'm gonna die and i need to make the most of my life yeah that's a good segue into how you've divided your bucket list like more tactically i guess um because it's easy to write down a list of things you know i want to go uh skydiving and climb mount everest and all this stuff but like i like how you've had it broken down into can you talk about the the different segments in your bucket list yeah, exactly. You said like everyone, when they think of a bucket list, it's like, oh yeah, I want to eat like pasta in Italy or go skydiving or something. Yeah. But right. I think it's it should be and it can be way more than that. So for me, I like putting like sections that cover every aspect of my life, health, uh, you know, relationships, experiences, travel, uh, giving back, like helping others skills career videos and yeah i i put every like i put like bucket list items for all of those things and how many total things are in your bucket list i don't even know it doesn't even ten hundreds thousands uh, <laughs> probably like i don't know 300 something like that yeah and it's a dynamic thing it changes over time as you yeah. sort of like learn new things right yeah like like just getting ready for this interview i was looking over my bucket list and i was like there's so many things i was like oh i don't care about that anymore so i just removed it and then there are certain things i added and yeah i, th I think that's important too because you you change a lot how often do you visit it like is it a new year's resolution thing you you make it a point to to look at it yeah definitely new year's i i say like four times a year like new year's uh on my birthday and whenever I'm having like an existential crisis, yeah, okay. I'm like, what, what the fuck am I doing in my life? And yeah, I'll just look at it. Only four of those a year? Wow. Okay. You must be in good shape. Uh, we, so you're also in a unique position, I realize too, because this is your bucket list, but also like your task list for work. Uh, <laughs> and so you probably have to come back to it when you're like, oh, what's my next video going to be? Slow dance in front of the Eiffel Tower. Like, let's go make that. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's crazy. But, I don't know. I think it's good to live a life with intention and like to quantify. I don't know if that's the right word, but like put like make the things that are in your head and that are important to you tangible, physical. I think it makes sense, too. I mean, I, I definitely don't do it. And I, I think part of the reason I was excited to interview you is like, I, I think I need to do this more in my own life. Things get so busy, right? Especially oh, yeah. if you're, you know, trying to make it in your career and jumping from job to job. I think people on average probably take like two weeks between jobs and that's like their reflection period, uh, you know, and that's like when you get to sit down and think about life or you think about it, you know, in your current job and 
it become and like you don't really have enough time to really reflect in a deep way so you kind of just keep pushing it off dude yeah everyone i know ex- exactly the same way and me too like i get so busy and it's it's so easy to get caught up with the motions of life of what you're supposed to do and kind of like what's just like immediately next that it, it's easy to just like put off all these things that are important to you so i think it kind of gives you that framework to realize and like reflect like what actually matters to me because it's, it's so easy to i don't know put off like oh yeah me and my mom have never you know traveled together we've never had a good relationship but you know like i'm busy right now i don't have time for that but you never know when it, it's too late you know i hear you man wise words um so let's go through a couple of your actual things you you mentioned the categories I'll read off a bunch of them. And Justin, if we can flash up our version of Adam's uh, bucket list that he was kind enough to share. So these are things that you have done. Uh, maybe I-, I see that there's some in the sort of like relationships category. So rekindling your relationship with your with your brother, uh-huh. right? Which is, which is not really like a traditional bucket list item, but something that you made a, a priority and did. Uh, how did you get to rehearse your favorite song? Cause some of these seem like things that with enough money and time you can just pull off, but some of these things aren't that. And that's, so the, one of them is rehearse my favorite song with my favorite musician. How did you, who's your favorite musician and how did you pull that off? So my favorite musician is Mark E. Basie. Okay. Um, he's not that famous, but I don't know, I've always just loved his music and I've been following him for a while. What vibe? What's, what style? It's kind of like pop rap r&b okay sort of kind of like chill i got you yeah and so the way it happened was i don't know i've always like just like really wanted to meet him and really wanted to i don't know just like sing my favorite song with like my favorite artist so that was something my bucket list but i never actually put in anything into plans to make it happen i was just like it's probably won't happen i'll just write it down but then one day I was so I was working for Yes Theory, this YouTube channel, and yeah, they the one of the co-founders called me up. He's like, "Yo, what are you doing next weekend?" And I was like, "Nothing." And he he was like, "We're hosting this big like live uh, meetup, like in person event, and like we want to fly you out to like be with us." And I was like, "Okay, right, sounds good." And then a day later on their story, they announced like who's singing at the event. And it was Mark E. Basie. No way. And they they had no idea. Pure coincidence. It was just completely coincidence. Like he's not a famous, he's not that famous. He's sort of famous. And, you know, I went to the event and I was helping uh, like work the behind the scenes of it. And I was tasked. I I told everyone, yo, I'm like the biggest fan of Mark E. Basie. And they, they put me in charge of like, escorting him sort of and like making sure he's like everything's good with behind the scenes with the green the green room is called yeah and he came and he was rehearsing like all of his all the music and shit and he was it was crazy because he just dropped his album at the same time too and yeah he sang my favorite song right next to me and i was just like like humming the background like holy shit this is insane did you tell him this was thing was on your bucket list did you get a chance to like actually interact with him um so i went up to him and like we met but i was i was really weird. yeah you don't want a fanboy too yeah, yeah that's another thing i was like i don't know i kind of had like this this pride thing i was like this ego thing and i don't know i was nervous i didn't want to come off as like a mega fan or whatever so i just played it cool i was like oh yo what's up like i'm adam like love your music yo is it, is it mark mark right yeah <laughs> well, it's good yeah bro. yeah like, <laughs> pretty cool uh but yeah yeah amazing it was very cool and it was just you know, I, I had no control over that. It just happened. It was crazy. I don't know what we want to call it. Like, luck, like, fee. I don't know. Just crazy. If I'm someone listening and I'm like, okay, how do I go about doing my own bucket list and then in my very busy life? So there's creating it, which is like, okay, maybe that's a one-time exercise. Sit down for an hour. Think about all these categories that you gave us. And it should somewhat come naturally what what you want to get out of life right yeah so i could actually i have a, I have a little step-by-step process i could run you through if you want oh okay let's do that i kind of 
boil down like my process at least for how I think about bucket lists and said three steps. Yeah. So first, write down all the most important categories of your life, like relationships, experiences. I don't know. Some people it's creativity or you know whatever is important to you. Um, just list all those categories out. Like what's what's important to you. Step number two: ask yourself, what do I want to do before I die? That would make my eight-year-old self and my 80-year-old self proud. And I think just from that question alone, like so many things will pop into your head of, you know, what kind of, how can I make my life more fun and like not take life seriously, like an eight-year-old. And then what is most important to me, like that while I'm still alive before I'm 80 years old would make my 80-year-old self proud. And, um, you know, take, take the 30 minutes, hour with no distractions and just like a blank piece of paper and just go for it. I think it's pretty fucking intimidating to like zoom out of your life and be like, okay, what do I actually want to do? What, what's important to me? Cause I don't know. It's scary. Like we're always just busy. We're always scrolling. Yeah, I mean, you'll start immediately thinking like, shit, I'm, I haven't done any of these things and then get overwhelmed, I imagine. Or that, that's what would be going through my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's so much. It's, I don't know. It's, it's scary, like, being reflective and not distracting yourself, I think, especially with culture nowadays. Do you, you get over that, though, with time? Do you... Does it, does it become easier as you start to check things off the list? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean... For me still, like there's a lot of times where I'll just like distract myself away through like work or staying busy to not actually take the steps I need to, you know, realign my life. But yeah, it's, it's very important. And I think most people will go throughout their lives and just never take a step back to say, you know, what's important to me and how can I make this tangible? And what's step three? Oh yeah. Step number three is you need to pretend that anything is possible. And you literally need to just put away all your current situations aside. Um, you know, ignore money, ignore like where you're at in life and just write shit that sounds completely absurd that would make yourself so proud. And I don't know, like imagine yourself when you're 80, like the truest, like most ideal version of yourself and ask yourself what would this person be proud of and reverse engineer it and just write it down that's step number three let me play the opposition just for argument's sake here if i'm listening to you and i say okay adam easy for you to say you're a travel blogger or vlogger or whatever like this is literally your job so it's easy to say you know jump off a cliff next to a world wonder because that plays nicely into what you do but i you know, I am an accountant at KPNG. Like, how am I supposed to actually do my bucket list? Is that a, is that a fair counter? Or what would you say to that? Dude, it's so, so fair. It's, I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up. Um, it's, yeah, it's, I think it's just, it's equally as important for someone that's doing, you know, just re regular things or maybe isn't as fortunate as me. I'm, I'm in the most fortunate position lucky position ever where i'm literally like my job is to fulfill my bucket list and to help others too which is not true for most people um but i think it's very important because you know it, it's your life you have one life and you know even if you're not going to be able to you know cliff jump off something or skydive or you know travel to tahiti what is the, the most important things in your life that you would regret not doing if you died whenever you don't know when you'll die. So that's why I said to, to put the different categories like relationships, uh, you know, uh, experiences, you know, e even if you, you don't have like the, the best money situation or you're living in a fucked up country or something, you know, ask yourself, what would I regret not doing? Yeah. So I think, I think it's good to have those like crazy moonshot goals that, you know, maybe if you can, if you think 
very unrealistically and you work towards it, maybe that could be possible. But it's also important to ask yourself, like, what is the most important? How can I live my life with like more intention? When it comes to actually executing this, the way that my brain works, at least, is whenever I get to a new level of experience, I feel like I just adapt to that thing and don't always totally appreciate the thing that I just did, whether it's a raise at work or traveling to a new place or getting to live in a nicer, better way that like five years ago, I would have said was very aspirational, but for some reason now doesn't feel that way. Are there things that you do along the way to prevent yourself from saying, oh, well, I did these bucket list items. Now, you know, keep moving the goalposts and end up in this like endless sort of treadmill where you're never actually satisfied. Yeah, no, I, I, I've thought about that so much recently. And I don't know, I realized, I don't know, as I was going towards like these bigger bucket list items and like dreams and stuff, I don't know, like as I was crossing them off, it, the more I did like crazier shit, the more I maybe appreciate like the smaller things. Like I just got back from traveling, I don't know, for five months. And that's always been my dream to just nonstop travel. And I got to make it happen and just make videos. It was just like such a dream. But the, at the end of it, I was like, this kind of isn't fulfilling, just nonstop, like doing things, like just traveling and no plan and stuff. And it made me realize like the most fundamental things like friends and family. And I was like, this is the most important. This is the most fulfilling thing. And I came back just appreciating my friends and family so much more. Yeah. I don't know if that like answer your question or not, but it's fair. I think there's a good balance somewhere probably, right? Like, and then you spend all your time with friends and family doing the same shit all the time. You probably get a little antsy, like, oh, I want to see more of the world. And so it, it kind of plays both ways. Exactly. Yeah. I think that that plays nicely into the way that you've structured it, where relationships is actually on your bucket list. So you don't get to 60 years old, you've skydived and bungee jumped and smoked weed with Snoop Dogg and all this stuff, but uh, you know, no one's there at your birthday party. Like that, that I think is an important component. So it's, it's good to focus on both, I think. Exactly, yeah. Dude, I, ra I randomly met this, I was in a, a jazz club uh, two weeks ago, like a, like a little concert in a little basement uh, in Austin, Texas. Yeah. And I, I accidentally met this billionaire. We were, we just happened to be sitting at the same table across from each other and we just talked. And then halfway through our conversation, he opened up to me saying like, you know, I was a billionaire and he told me how he literally did everything he wanted to do on his kind of bucket list. Like he bought jets, he traveled everywhere, you know, he had all the women, did everything. He said, yo, I was literally about to kill myself. Like I was literally so depressed. Wow. And he's like, this wasn't he, Elon Musk, was it? No, no. Say about it. It's like a <laughs> billionaire in Austin. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like this random. I think he was like sixty something years old, and he, he, I had no idea who he was. Like he wasn't famous or anything. Yeah. And I, he, he put it so much into perspective. He's like, "Yo, at the end of the day, none of that shit matters." You know, like, you know, it's easy for me to say I, I accomplished all of this and I have all this money, but. You know, if you're able to keep your basic needs and kind of do exciting things, the mo at the end of the day, the most important stuff is your relationships. And he said having kids saved his life. Wow. And I, don't know, I thought it was really powerful. I was like, damn, like, what am I chasing? Like, am I chasing to be successful or am I chasing fulfillment and like a really well-rounded life? So I'd say for people on, when you're thinking about your bucket list, don't just think about oh, like, what would I, if I was a billionaire, what could I do? Think like, if I wanted to live the most fulfilling life, what is most important to me? That's amazing. Yeah, and I noticed you have uh, marry someone I love, have kids, grow old enough to watch my kids get married on your bucket list. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this, this stuff is super important. You have a favorite of the ones that you have done that you can tell, and maybe we can just close with a story because uh, I can't let all of this go untouched. I mean- We've got first aid to Northern Lights. You gave the the short version of that. 
run a marathon and the stranger uh slow dance in front of the eiffel tower you're you're quite the romantic adam huh <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. yeah are these just excuses for you to go on dates i'm starting to realize oh it's on my bucket list like you know. <laughs> no, i'm sorry like i'm just i have to go after my bucket yeah. list you know like this had to be no, a no. really hot girl and ask her if she wanted to come to paris with me like i i didn't want this is on my bucket list um <laughs> let's do so what what was the world wonder that you jumped off a cliff next to so that one honestly so like a lot of these things on my bucket list i kind of come up with spontaneously too like I was just traveling in Brazil and we were next to the, the world wonder, like Cristo Red Dead Tour. It's like Christ the Redeemer. Yeah. And there was um, hang gliding right off a giant uh, cliff next to it, off this mountain. I was like, this is now on my bucket list. Like I, I need to do this. <laughs> so yeah, we saw that. It seemed really sketchy, but I don't know. It was one of those things where I was just like, Fuck it. Like, I'm Rio once, you know, I just need to make this happen. Are you generally like an adventure junkie? Like, you get scared of heights and stuff, or are you chill with that stuff? I'm like an adrenaline. Yeah. I like getting, you know, adventures and chasing adrenaline and stuff, but I, I get really scared too. I don't know. I'm, I'm like, I think very rationally, but I'm also really excited by crazy stuff. So I was really fucking scared, but I just kind of went for it. And it was crazy. It was so sick. Like, it literally felt like you were flying. We did uh, hang gliding, and we just went over the top of Rio. That's next level. Yeah, it was surreal. I'll close with this, but what's your what's your plan to smoke weed? I assume <laughs> smoke weed with Snoop Dogg. Um, I don't have a plan. I don't know. I just, I think maybe one day it'll happen. <laughs> but I, I always thought that would be, like, a cool thing to do. Yeah. Because Snoop Dogg is the he's the ambassador of of marijuana, so that is right. Yeah, I thought if I could smoke weed with anyone in the world, it'd be Snoop Dogg. So who knows? Maybe one day it'll happen. Have you seen that little Dicky video? Which one? Oh, you got to see this. It's it's a music video called Professional Rapper, and it's like a animated cartoon thing of of little Dicky going into Snoop's office and like pitching him his rap. And they end up smoking together. It's hilarious. I'll send it to you. You'll you'll get a kick out of it. That's fine. I like the little bit. Before before we end, I'm curious, like what what comes to mind for you for like hearing all this, like like, like bucket list stuff. Like, is there anything like maybe top five things like that you're thinking of, you know, like that you want to put on your bucket list? Oh man. What were the what were the categories again? It was relationship skills. You tell me. What what would be important for you? relationships definitely up there um skills um experiences like travel adventure stuff i think relationships for me i've i've always wanted to do like go on like a tennis retreat my dad and i like love tennis and i grew up playing with my dad he taught me tennis it was like our thing that we did to bond as kids so i've always wanted to like take him to a tennis resort in europe or florida or wherever mm -hmm. And just spend a week like just playing tennis together. Wow! Um, because he's just like a simple dude and loves that. And and I I'm kind of the same way. And I feel like that would be a great bonding experience to have. I love that. Um, on skills, actually, something I'm trying to level up on is like, you know, uh, you know, maybe this isn't like crazy enough to be on a bucket list, but I do want to like get really good at making videos, not just at like the concept, but also like the hard skills. Um, like Bo Burnham is a, is a huge inspiration to me and what he created with inside. Do you know that, that actually he released in COVID where he like made a whole, um, hour long, I don't even know what to call it. Cause it's, it's the only thing in its category. Yeah. Yeah. And it was all inside of a studio, uh, apartment. And it, it was one of the best pieces of content that I've ever consumed. So like being able to pull that off end to end, um, with photography and the videography that goes into that and all that stuff. That's, that's maybe another one. That's sick. I love that. I, I think, uh, you know, equally like the biggest stuff that you can possibly imagine is, is important, but also the little stuff that maybe you don't prioritize right now, like going on that trip with your dad. Yeah. Uh, just becoming better at videos to maybe one day make something like Bo Burnham. Yeah. I think even just talking out loud about it, it's like, having the list gives you some level of accountability versus now it's, I don't really have a list. So it's like, I know it's this thing. It kind of lingers in the back of my mind. 
And then one day it might not be possible because I don't know, any number of reasons. Um, but when you have a list, you can, you can tell your boss, you know, and it's not an excuse to, to skip work or anything, but I think it, it comes with a little bit more conviction when you're like, this is something that I really want to do. I wrote it down. I've been thinking about it a lot and I actually want to do it because that, that's what you need to do to actually like pull this st stuff off in, in, the, in a busy life. It helps you so much just live with attention. Amazing, dude. Well, uh, again, I could go through all of these. Maybe we will. Maybe we'll do a part two or, or a series where you can uh, tell me all these amazing stories of the things that you've done. But for now, anything you want to plug? Oh, uh, just, I don't know. Check out the videos on social media. Adam, bro. Yeah, people need to just go check out your YouTube. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff, honestly. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't really have much to plug. You're not selling like Adam Boro hats or uh, uh, t-shirts, yeah, <laughs> travel gear, no, no, no. neck pillows. That could be cool. A neck pillow. You should do a neck pillow collab with uh, whoever the fuck makes neck pillows. Yo, I was actually thinking about that. I don't know. We'll see. One day, maybe. I'll add this to the bucket list. Amazing. Well, it's been so much fun chatting, Adam. Uh, appreciate everything you do. Appreciate you sharing these these insights with us and uh yeah hopefully we'll see you around dude thank you so much for having me um i'm excited to see your bucket list i i challenge you to uh on a post like on a, your top five or something yeah after after this goes live i'll text you Keep yourself no i'm gonna do this i'm serious about it i uh i need to yeah. sit down let's go i need to sit down and do it you've inspired me all right amazing dude thank you bro